Welcome back, I'm MTG Joe, and today I'm going to try a couple more of the rotation proof decks. Um, so I've done a number in the series, I think we're up to 10 decks now. Uh, so the whole purpose or premise behind this is to look at decks that consist of only of cards that will survive this upcoming rotation. Um, so keep in mind, these aren't intended to be tier 1 decks, they're not being like, I don't have psychic abilities, I don't know what exactly will be the best deck post rotation. What we're really just trying to do is look at decks that if you like them, you want to play them now, you can craft. But if not, then um, it's really just a thought exercise to see what could be potentially good. Like for example, Simic Ramp felt really good post rotation, while Is It Phoenix deck lost too many cards and it felt really clunky. Um, so I have two articles up on Aetherhub right now, highlighting the 10 decks we've done. Um, and then what we're looking at is now a mono black mid-range deck. So this saves on the dual lands. Um, I don't know how good this deck will be, so we're going to have to play some games with it. But the premise is just really powerful black spells with some disruption. So in the, the one drop slot we have Knight of Even Legion, a very powerful one drop that scales late game. Uh, into bigger threat, can trade up which is something nice. Uh, we have Disfigure as early removal, but also just for our creatures to trade through. Uh, Duress is basically like a Thought Seize effect in our deck. We're able to tear apart the opponent's hand, get rid of board wipes if need be. Uh, Yark's Fen Lurker is another way that we can force our opponent to exile cards from their hand. And if we draw it late game, we could sink mana into it and it becomes a little bit more reasonable of a threat. Uh, Dreadhorde Invasion is for us to create a steady supply of creatures that can attack. Uh, Midnight Reaper is a card draw engine, as well as Rotting Regisar um, is kind of the opposite, but it's a big threat that needs to be answered with. Davriel's to disrupt our opponent's hand. Sorry, give me one sec to tell the dog to come upstairs. Sorry about that. Uh, dog couldn't find where I was even though I told her I was going upstairs. Um, Omnix's Cruelty is just some good removal, also the Exile effect is reasonable. Uh, Dread Presence really rewards us for playing Swamps, uh, either card draw or uh, reach in terms of damage and life gain. Want to see if Spawn and Mayhem can do anything in the deck, just playing a 1-of. A lot of times with these lists I'll throw in a 1-of here and there just to see if it's reasonable. Uh, Bantu's card draw, late game, uh, hard to deal with threat and evasive. Uh, it keeps coming back, which is nice. If it uh, gets killed or exiled, it just goes back into our library. Uh, and then an Ugin's a catch-all removal spell, kind of pseudo card draw on the top end as well. Um, got 20 swamps, 4 mobilized district, basically just as a creature line in our deck. Uh, we'll see how that feels if we want it as something with... Because it's pretty much always going to be 4 mana. But we'll see how that fares. Sideboard, I got Legion's End versus... Uh, Hydroid Crisis's, all the zombies that come out from uh, Escape Shift, uh, Ford Noxious Grasp versus Green or White stuff, a couple Soren's Thirst versus the Mono Red deck, Elder Spell versus like Teferi based decks, Ashiok versus Escape Shift, uh, as well as any deck that kind of wants to use their uh, graveyard. I'm trying out Bolus' Citadel first in place of uh, Liliana, Dreadhorde General. I usually like having a top end 6 drop out of the sideboard versus control that just grinds out long term card advantage. So I want to see how this fares because it allows us to cast multiple spells in a turn. Um, so even if it gets destroyed right after, we still get the value. And then another Ugin just as catch all. It's really nice in stained glass so we'll try that out. Um, so I'm going to run this deck first through non-ranked. I want to see how it kind of I threw together a bunch of cards, but I want to see if they actually work before playing some ranked games. Um, so we'll get started there. Um, before we jump into the games, just a couple housekeeping items for the channel. Um, I did announce in a past video we will be doing another giveaway. Um, so the giveaways that we'll, we've done in the past was like a Liliana Dreadhorde General, which was the most recent. We've done a Foil Watery Grave. Uh, these are real cards, not digital. Um, so I'm looking to give away a Japanese alternate art Sahili uh, Sublime Artisan. Um, so the easiest way to enter, and well, sorry, it's very easy to enter. Uh, I just randomly give it away to one of my subs on the channel. If you're already a sub, you're already entered in the draw. Uh, once we hit 800 subs, we're about 30 subs away from that mark. Um, I will announce the draw. Um, so if you can, hit that sub button. It's free and easy. 
uh, as well as something I'm going to be exploring uh, between now and rotation. I'm just figuring out the best method in terms of how to gather all the information is doing at some frequency uh, playing sub decks. So if you're a subscriber and you have a deck you want me to try out on the, the channel, I'll do a video on it. I'm just organizing the thoughts right now how to collect that information. And uh, I'll, on a future video I'll just explain how, but that's a free kind of way that if you want to share some deck ideas, especially with rotation coming up, it's fun to play some cool brews. Um, and finally with TCG Player, I am an affiliate. There is a link in the video description down below. If you click that link and then just follow your normal purchase, um, it does help support the channel and it's you purchasing cards you would have purchased anyways. Um, and that's pretty much my pandering, so let's play some games. So the nice thing here is you get to save all the rare cards for dual lands, and all our lands come into play untapped. It does suck that the... Uh, <laughs> Our reward for the day is play red or green stuff, as opposed to um, a mono black deck that we're playing. So we'll play first. We'll keep this hand. We have some flexibility if we need to be the aggressor or the control deck in this matchup. Opponent's thinking about it. Also, I, I know a lot of my videos right now are just YouTube replays. Um, I usually record them offline, but starting in the fall, my schedule should change, which will allow me to be able to do some more live streaming on Twitch. So hoping to get more of a community presence, more discussion going on as opposed to after the fact. So I'll have a couple notices coming out with there. Uh, once I just kind of work out my schedule. Come on, opponent. Opponent, come on. All right. Opponents certainly taking their time. Having on the full art lines, but these lines are really nice. These would be cool on full art. Uh, could be feather. If they drop like a legionnaire, we have disfigure for it. This is also very good against a Danto Vanguard. Um, I think I want to bait them into attacking and then just disfigure and then drop Rotting Registrar. Okay, so they have True Fire Captain. Need to put a stop on their mid uh, main phase one to kill it before they get a token. So we don't get to ambush them this turn, but we only take two. Hmm. They opt to not attack there. Uh, so they'll go true fire next turn, but we can probably just get this going. 
There was a thought we could attack with the knight. But I don't really want to pump mana into it if they did block. Dive rail is not the best here. So that's a clean answer there. And then our riding registrar is a big body. This also gets bigger, which is nice. So now I can at least block that they'd have to pump for mentor. If they attack, I'll take it. Discard the duress to riding registrar this turn. The dog has found her way up to the office when we record. I'm just gonna attack in with both here. This just lets it get bigger too. And then we'll just disfigure their creature on end step. I can take the two damage, just see to kill whatever creature doesn't come up. So they have the goblin banneret. We'll probably kill the banneret since it can most likely hit us or like uh, pump up yeah they're dead though cool that worked out pretty well game one uh post board we want soren's thirst And Legion's End. Probably don't want the Davriels in this matchup. And don't want Ugin's at least removal, but we're unlikely to get that high on the curve versus them, but it's clean removal. Could probably get rid of Spawn and Mayhem here. Or maybe just the Bantus and play the Ugins instead. Try it like that. Didn't want to play against the mono black menace. Uh, what's our rank at? Gold. Ah, let's try a ranked one with it. This Bant Ramp deck's really good if you're looking for a constructed deck. You just went out of nowhere. You can just generate like 12 plus mana. You do Finale of Glory, the white Finale, and your opponent goes from winning the game to just scooping. So opponent does get to play first. Uh, we'll keep this hand. Just 
Let's escape shift. So I'm just gonna get the invasion going so we can start getting creatures. Fenmaster, they have a lot of cards in hand. So I think this might be a little bit better. I was gonna say that's interesting block they're deciding on. Uh, here we'll just go Dread Presence. Okay, so they're going root. That will turn on Field of the Dead. So it might be too slow. Gonna attack in with both here. If they want to double block Dread Presence, that's fine. Gets us a card draw. Likely just gonna go Fenbrooker, Fenlurker, and another Dread Horde here. All right, cool. So here. Probably just go face. And so rejuvenator out of the way. It's a, it's a blocker and it, well, it's, could in theory be two blockers just cause they're gonna get the land off it. Uh, this seems like scape shift. Unless they do root and then scape shift. zombies Probably dead here. We'll see what we draw. No blocks here. Let's just see what we get. I don't think we win here. We can sack. To get another trigger, but it doesn't do much. Okay, they got us this one. This is a hard matchup. 
Uh, so what we'll want is Legions and Ashiok. I don't think our life total matters in this matchup, so just going big works. Also don't think we need Bantu in this matchup, we want to go more aggressive. Uh, cut three cards, probably just disfigure. Go as aggressive as possible. Run it back. Since the update, the audio has been really weird on uh, Arena. Like my music just stopped during the load screen. Like it's just this weird silence now as opposed to the background music. We'll play first. This hand's good. The fact we have Legion's End is a good way to just catch up late game if need be. Usually they go kind of all in on a big scape shift turn. Like that game, they had 29 zombies, we clear them all out. It's a pretty like, niche stop gap, but it works pretty well. Also, Knight into Knight is a nice uh, early draw. Duress would be a sweet draw to get here. He's not bad. Just in case they have any sort of flash shenanigans that kill it. Next turn we can start triggering these. All right, they spiral here. Soren's Thirst might be better than Omnixus Cruelty here. It's gonna just sit in our hand. I could deal with the Grazer. Get our triggers there. Probably should have dropped the district down. We could have started attacking with it too. See how they block here. I'm okay trading here. We have a double pump available to us next turn. And if they don't commit another creature to the board, we'll just Legion's End Hydrate Crisis and then go from there. short so we can do a pump okay so we have ashiok that's not bad so it kills out there Got rid of another Hydroid Crisis. They also can't search for lands. So we should have this one wrapped up.
I really like Knight of Even Even Legion. So if they don't have another land effect, we just legions end them and then kill them. Oh, they got the scape shift in hand. Why is their hand play being played revealed? <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is a bug. Okay, well... Forgot about the... the thing there. The, uh... Blast Zone. Got another Teferi out of the way. They can make a zombie. Just get rid of Escape Shift. Thirty-one cards. So we're at six. So if they double block, we could pump both. But they can just target Ashiok and try to kill her here. This does get a little. I think we just wait. Probably went a little premature, missing the blast zone there. animate here so block and then tap and activate this so it kills two zombies at least hopefully get one more action activation So we hit another escape shift. Actually, we should hold our lands now uh, in case we draw Dread Presence to get value off it. That was a misplay. So they have Memorial. At the very least, this draws out the game a little bit longer that they might mill themselves out. This deck does have a lot of staying power. And we've drawn our hate cards this game, but I think we got a little too cocky with the win there, didn't play around. Take down a zombie for free here. Okay, well. Reggie's a body. We can block two zombies a turn. Uh, root gets him a lot. I think we're just trying to draw into Legion's end here.
Okay, well. Ashiok Exiles 4. They can come all into us. That's 22, 23 power. We block 4 of it. So they have Exaxes if they attack with everything. Yeah, they see it. Alright, well that one was a little annoying. I don't mind this deck post rotation when they don't have like the scape shift finish. But uh seems rough. Might want to go up more Legion's end. Yeah, let's try a uh, oh, oh we already sorry. I was gonna say let's try a best of one. Play first. Keep this hand. I actually want to try this hand with Spawn and Mayhem to see how it goes. Opponent's taking their time again. I don't know if this is like opponent thing, server thing. There was just an update last night. Okay, so we'll keep six. Maybe just Midnight Reaper goes. Vampires. Probably a tough matchup. At least game one. Um, with the Fenberker. I think we just trade aggressively here. Can probably win the long game. Just discard Fen Lurker. Hey, got the land. They're gonna pay for life here. That seems very aggressive. All right, well, we're going to the skies. At this point, because they're at 11, the one point of damage a turn is pretty good. So we do lose the Dread Presence. Uh, dive reels. Sub lifelink. Get over four a turn. See if they get distracted by this. This takes them to five. 
Oh, then if you have 10 or less life. Put a counter on Vanguard. Somewhat priced into attacking in. I kind of want my life to drop to 10. Why are you attacking there? Okay, let's see if they pay the life here. can just Midnight Reaper. That draws us a card. Um, yeah, I think we just go like that. The other Danto does much. Oh, it's a little awkward. Yeah. They can kind of draw it out a couple more turns, but they're pretty much going to be dead. Um, here, Legion Den's good. This hits white creatures, so Noxious Grasp. Soren's Thirst. Uh, probably just want to cut my curve down. Uh, Fenlurker was... Oh, actually, get rid of Dreadhorde Invasion here. I don't mind forcing them to discard. Davriel seems less than desirable here. This gives us card draw. The flyers seem relevant. Actually, we can get rid of Duress, I think, in this matchup. Go Ugin. Go you. Just run it back. Elder spells too narrow, it really only would target Soren. Well, we're on the all removal hand. Hopefully they play a couple of the same one drops, we can exile them or pick apart their hand. be a beautiful target for Legion's End. Probably gonna play out the removal in my hand first and then start targeting stuff. Uh, Adonto might be better to... Yeah, because they have to spend the mana, and if they're spending the mana this turn, then I'm fine. Okay, so they're, they have the Soren put in Champion of Dusk this turn. So we'll have Nixus cr Cruelty here. The Champion of Dusk. So 
was hoping they put it on the champion so we could have killed it in response. See if they pump here, they don't. Another light Knight of Eben. Okay, so they have the landing. Um, so if you get them to spend all their mana this turn. I don't really want to block and we're behind right now. Let's just go spawn. They could put the counter on the Adanto. We'll see what they put it on. That is a lot worse. Um, that gets him to commit the mana. So we take less damage. I think we're dead regardless at this point. The fact that all these things are different for Legion's End makes it a lot worse. Also just not being instant hurts. Alright opponent. Would think you'd want to do it the other way. Yeah, so I could go... Reaper... Legion's End. But I think we're dead anyways. Play draw here might be more meaningful. Spawn's been okay these matchups. Yeah, this sounds much better. Tons of removal. Deal with their one drop, deal with their two drop, deal with their three drop. Midnight and Regisar to start smashing face. Come on, opponent. If you don't like your hand, throw it away. This figure will probably see a lot more play come the new standard, unless we get another more premium instant speed. Let's kill that now. So here I'm probably going to kill whatever they play on to with Noxious Grasp. And then just drop the Reaper down. Uh, it's a little awkward. Um, let's just go Midnight Reaper here. They have a kill spell that replaces itself. We'll take the two here. Want to be able to attack in. Ah, uh, we guessed wrong. We guessed wrong. Okay. 
That would have been a great if we could have taken both. I just want to be able to empty my hand. This figure is cool. So they're not going to block here. This has more value to them. Mm. I think killing the Legion Lieutenant is more impactful. They're going to play Champion of Desk here. Another mobilized district. Uh, they, it's a free block for them on Midnight Reaper. They attack with champion. I'm probably gonna double block it with mobilized district, but we'll see what they play up. Uh, the death touch is relevant. Ah, uh, one short. Attack in with both here, I think. Uh, yeah, we'll attack in with both. A block here, block here. I want to try to get Ugin down. So it's more just for blocking here. This is each opponent loses life, not Planeswalker. They have one pump available. So both ways it deals four damage, but like this it forces them to spend their mana. Actually not bad, it would have had flying. Let's see what we got with Ugin. So we can get another like blocking turn cycle with Ugin. This is making the race a lot harder. Uh, so here. Just block like that. Night of even having death touch can deal with Sanctum Seeker. 42 cards. Ah. 
Drawing nothing but lines is really awkward. Uh, so if we look at this, it's three mana to activate. So we won't have enough anyways. If we play this, we need three mana for there. And then three mana for Eben, so we have to do it this way. So what we have to do is animate this block and then pump with that. Not gonna attack with Sanctum? Okay, good. So what we do here is we animate. We go to block step. We block in response, just pump ours up. Hopefully they don't have like a cast down or something. Soren's Thirst is nice, so let's pump you up first. to do it like this so we're gonna deal the damage to this target they're gonna pump it in response and then we soar and thirst it and then no attackers we block and block and then we can use this to kill knight of even or Champion of Dusk. So it doesn't matter here. Might be able to grind this out. Ugin's been carrying us. Danto. Um, so the question here is we can deal two damage, they have the pump up, we can exile. So we have, we need three mana plus that. So let's draw a card first. See what we get. Okay, so that's a redraw there. So if we do this, that presents us with the three blockers. So we can do two blockers. That drops down by not blocking a Danto. Gives us some more card draw. Or we kill the Champion of Dusk, but then we're forced into block. So I think we go this route. Just make another Ooh, Noxious Grasp's good. 
and just pass the turn here. Can multi block this turn. Take some more stuff off the battlefield. there Forced here to use mobilized district. Block like that. Dread Presence is nice. This allows us to kill Champion of Dusk. And Cruelty is a clean answer. Just past the turn here. So what we're gonna have to do here, unfortunately, is throw one of our dread presents in the way. I think Ugin's providing us more utility at this point. We did take four damage there. We can cruelty this vanguard just to keep our mana open. Okay. Another vanguard gets a little bit annoying. Um I think we just let this resolve. So we can destroy the Knight of Eben. Might be the right call there. Ah, sweet. Deal two up top. This has just been great card advantage. Uh, and we will pass the turn. I just want to play around this figure if they have it. Ugin's been doing a lot for us. That's fine. Uh, so we don't take the point of damage. Off the Sanctum Seeker. I'm gonna have Nixus Cruelty here. And then Knight of Eben can trade with the Sanctum Seeker after we kill the Knight of Eben with Ugin. Cool, cool. Uh, let's 
draw a card here first. This has been great. So if I do this, I have enough mana afterwards. Get rid of Knight of Eben. Tired of this death touch. And then we'll just throw this in front of the Sanctum Seeker. Just get rid of that. We block, activate. Got him, bet vampires. This deck's pretty cool. Definitely something worth exploring further. Um, so I'll load this up on YouTube uh, and we'll take it from there. Thanks for watching and have a great one.